Thank you and welcome back. Resuming with portfolio questions on communities and local government. Our first question from Dr. Alistair Allen. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government how its food fund will continue to support groups most in need over the summer, including families with children who are eligible for free school meals. Cabinet Secretary Eileen Campbell. Thank you. On the 16th of June, the First Minister announced an additional £27.6 million pounds in funding to local authorities to support those at risk over the summer months. Importantly, this funding will enable the continuation of free school meal provision to eligible families over the school holidays and for that provision to be coordinated with wider support to families. The funding will allow local authorities to continue to deliver a coordinated local response for those at risk, including supporting people who are having difficulty affording or accessing food, for example, those who are being asked to self-isolate, under test and protect. This funding adds to initial £30 million of food funding allocation to local authorities in April and complements our efforts uh, around the community responses, including £2.1 million to Fair Share, who will continue to distribute food to com community organisations during the summer months. Our support to people in the shielding group has also been maintained, with an additional £15 million being made available following the extension of the shielding period to the end of July. Overall, more than £110 million has been di invested directly in supporting people at risk to access food since the start of the pandemic. Alistair Allen. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her reply. Can she say more about how this additional funding will support whole families as well as children on free school meals and how the investment will reach those who have difficulties not just in affording but also in accessing food? Cabinet Secretary. So the Food Fund guidance issued in April provided local authorities with flexibility to best meet local circumstances, and that included the principle of supporting whole households and whole needs uh, approaches. So we've given local authorities the flexibility to provide their allocation of the now £57 million that they have to reach people in the most suitable way based on local need. And that will enable authorities to continue free school meal provision to eligible families over the school holidays and for that provision to also be coordinated with wider support to families and to support people who have difficulty affording or accessing food. So it's about giving local authorities flexibility, enabling them to determine their own circumstances and how best to use that funding, but also making sure that the guiding principle for that is that about meeting and supporting a whole household needs and taking a whole needs and household approach. Thank you. And I should have mentioned that questions one, two, and six are grouped together, as are questions four and five later. Uh, so any supplementaries to this grouping should be taken at the end. Uh, question two, Ruth McGuire. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what funding it's provided to third sector and community organisations to address hunger and isolation during the COVID-19 crisis. Cabinet Secretary Eileen Campbell. Thank you. On 18th of March, I announced £350 million of communities funding comprised of eight funds to ensure local authorities, community groups and the third sector are able to support people and communities affected by COVID-19. £10 million of the £70 million food fund is being invested directly in third sector and local community responses. Funding has also been allocated to the third sector for food provision from other Scottish Government funds established to support community responses to the pandemic, including over £2.6 million from the Wellbeing Fund to 127 projects across Scotland and £5.2 million from the Supporting Communities Fund to 124 organisations. A national phone line to help those who are at increased risk and who have no other support available was launched on the 14th of April and the total number of callers who have accessed their local authority via this national helpline is 40,615. Ruth McGuire. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Um, Fullerton Hub in my constituency, their volunteers have been delivering 149 fresh meals a day to those who are shielding, and they're doing that seven days a week. They've twice been refused third sector resilience funding without any feedback on why they didn't meet um, their application wasn't approved. Would the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that communities often know best how to help themselves and where they're meeting needs and delivering? What's asked of them, we must make sure they're resourced and can she provide any assistance to Fullerton in where they can obtain funds from? Cabinet Secretary. Okay, and uh, so firstly, I want to pay tribute to that phenomenal effort uh, and response uh, from Fullerton Community Hub. 
who are delivering and uh, for very vulnerable people in their community and would agree with that principle that Ruth McGuire expressed around communities knowing best and we have seen that happen across uh, the whole of the country communities stepping up uh, and ensuring the resilience of the country so we're incredibly grateful for what they have been doing now I understand that Fullerton community have applied to the third sector resilience fund and whilst they weren't successful here they were directed to support by just enterprise and I am pleased that Fullerton Community Hub have received funding via the Wellbeing Hub, uh, the Wellbeing Fund, sorry, and uh, so I'm, uh, hopefully that has helped them. However, I will uh, undertake to, you know, further communicate with with, with Ruth McGuire about whether or not there is anything further that can be done to support Fullerton uh, Community Hub, making sure that they are very clear about what where they didn't meet some of the criteria and for why to enable them to uh, hopefully move forward and understand where they can maybe go next uh, to access some funding. But they, it seems that they have been able to access funding from the Wellbeing Fund, uh, that they were given support from Just Enterprise. Uh, but if there's anything further we can do, then I'm uh, happy to engage with, with Ruth McGuire on that. Thank you. Question six, Sarah Boyack. To ask the Scottish Government what its position is on whether the food fund is sufficient to support groups most in need over the summer, including families with children who are eligible for free school meals. Cabinet Secretary. So, as I said in response to the earlier question from Dr. Allen, the First Minister announced last week an additional £27.6 million in funding to local authorities to support those at risk over the summer months, and the additional funding for the provision of free school meals during the school holidays has been calculated based on the latest data from local authorities on how many children are receiving a free school meal provision and the average cost of a free school meal. So officials will continue to engage closely with local authorities to monitor spend and delivery to ensure the support is reaching those most in need and sharing learning to improve delivery across the country. But overall, uh, more than £110 million has been invested directly in supporting people at risk to access food since the start of this pandemic. Sarah Boyack. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. I think that uh, support is very much welcomed, and there is some fantastic work being done in our communities. Um, you rightly mentioned the need to address whole household needs, and the IPPR has suggested that there are 100,000 families in serious financial difficulties in Scotland struggling to pay for food or essential items. And we know there are families in unsuitable accommodation without access to cooking facilities. So I wonder what the Cabinet Secretary thinks about the campaign by anti-poverty groups to suggest that the Scottish Government should urgently provide lump sum payments of £250 per child to low-income families this summer to enable them to address the issue of ending food poverty and get their families through the pandemic. Cabinet Secretary. Yeah, no, thank you. I, I, I recognise that uh, Sarah Boyack's uh, interest and in continued pursuit of making sure that people are supported uh, over over the summer, and and I hope that the resources that we've put in place go some way to help families. And again, you know, we do want to take that whole household approach to support the whole household, and why we also want to be guided by a principle of cash first, because we recognise that to give families agency and autonomy that they require uh, that, that cash to enable them to, to make best use of the of their household uh, budget. So £110 million directly to support people at risk to access food. And that is, I hope, goes some way to trying to meet the needs of the, the people that Sarah Boyack describes. But I think there is opportunity for us to learn about what, what's working, what can we do more of, how do we link, link together policies such as housing policies to make sure that going forward we are clear in our pursuit of trying to uh, eradicate food insecurity and making sure that we link appropriately to the a huge um, a progress that has been, been made around homelessness over this pandemic, and more generally the policies that Kevin Stewart has been uh, progressing uh, in collaboration with, with partners. But I think there is opportunity for us to do more on this. There is opportunity for us to maximise the impact of the resources and to knit together other uh, policy areas much more effectively, whether that is out of school clubs, out of um, holiday provision, a whole host of areas where I think at this point in time we need to grab that opportunity to make sure that this works more for families who are uh, at risk or in need uh, during these uh, what are quite stressful uh, times for families when they are when their children are at home. So uh, I'm happy to continue to engage with Sarah Boyle on that and other organisations as well. And we'll continue to be looking at this through our 
uh, advisory board on social uh, renewal, uh, with a key theme being food insecurity and making sure that we can move towards food security for everyone. Thank you very much. Question number three, Graham Simpson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to ask the Scottish Government what, what actions it's taking in response to the high rise inventory 20, 2020. Thank you. Housing Minister Kevin Stewart. Thank you very much. Uh, Presiding report of the first high rise inventory uh, was published on the 20th of March this year. And the purpose of the inventory is to provide the Scottish Government uh, with an overview uh, of the number of high-rise domestic buildings in Scotland, uh, together with key aspects of the construction and fire safety features in the building. It has been shared with the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, who have confirmed that the inventory will be a valuable resource uh, which can be used to support operational responses to fires and fire prevention activities, as well as complementing their quarterly operational assurance visits. Graeme Simpson. Uh, well, can I thank the Minister for that answer? Um, I'm sure he'll be aware of the session that we had last week at the Local Government and Communities Committee, which looked at this, uh, and there were some calls for the inventory to be made public. I wonder what you could say to that. Um, there were also some calls uh, that uh, cladding, combustible cladding should be banned in Scotland. Um, could he say something on that? And could he also say if he would like to replicate the fund that's been set up by the UK government to remove unsafe cladding? That's a £1 billion fund set up by Robert Jenrick. Uh, and he said, he would not accept any excuses from building owners who have yet to take action. Those responsible should register for the fund so they can start re the remediation process immediately. Will we have something similar here? Minister Kevin Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. As uh, Mr Simpson is aware, I wrote a comprehensive letter uh, to the committee this week on a number of issues around about this. Uh, I was due to appear uh, in front of the committee, I think, at the beginning of April, but of course that was cancelled uh, because of the pandemic. And I'm more than happy uh, to appear in front of the committee after the summer on these issues. Um, in terms of the high rise inventory itself, uh, in terms of sharing that, um, there have been uh, suggestions that that be shared with surveyors, uh, but there is no intention to do that. Um, as part of the conveyancing process, uh, because there are risks there uh, in terms of GT GDPR and other data protection issues. Uh, and there is also uh, the possibility um, that uh, the inventory is used by uh, ne'er do wells. But that is something um, that I am willing to consider. Uh, Mr. Simpson has heard me before. Uh, talk about taking the advice of the ex independent expert panel uh, that we put in place around about the importance of BS 8414. Um, and I know uh, that amongst experts, including some of the uh, people who appeared at committee uh, this week, uh, there is a debate uh, between, uh, amongst them uh, around about the value of BS 8414. Uh, but that uh, is recognised um, as a world-leading example of testing. Um, but, um, as I have said to the committee previously, we will continue to look at all aspects of this and take the necessary actions as we move forward. Um, Mr Simpson also mentioned Mr Jenrick, uh, who uh, is a man who does not seem to have his troubles to seek at this moment. Uh, but what would be useful uh, in all of this is that if there was more cooperation uh, from UK ministers. Um, as Mr Simpson is aware, I have written to Mr Jenrick some five times uh, on this issue, and most of it um, uh, in terms of mortgage lending and insurance is reserved. What would be useful for us if we had some more cooperation from the UK government? Thank you very much. Question number four, Annie Wells. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to ensure that emergency accommodation to tackle homelessness is provided throughout the duration of the COVID-19 outbreak. Minister Kevin Stewart. Uh, Presiding Officer, mm. since the 23rd of March, uh, we have provided over £1 million to third sector organisations uh, to enable them to acquire emergency hotel accommodation for people experiencing homelessness, uh, such as those who are people uh, with no recourse to public funds. Uh, intelligence from outreach services show that there are no more than 30 people uh, sleeping rough in the areas where rough sleeping is concentrated. Uh, these individuals are known to services, uh, and they are being encouraged daily uh, to take up the offer of support. Uh, we do not want anyone uh, to return to unsuitable accommodation or rough sleeping as we emerge from the crisis. Uh, and supporting people out of emergency accommodation uh, into settled homes uh, will form the basis of our recovery plans. I have reconvened uh, the Homelessness and Rough Sleeping Action Group uh, to guide us through the vital next stage, uh, and will work with partners to support people as we ease out of the lockdown period. Annie Wells. I thank the Minister for that response. Uh, as he said, the Scottish Government's Rough Sleeping Action Group is worried that once the pandemic ends, homelessness could spike. So, if I could ask, what is the government doing to ensure that this is not the case, especially when councils like Glasgow have been accused of turning homeless people away by Shelter Scotland? Minister. Uh, as I mentioned in my first response, President Officer, we are working very well with partners right across the board, uh, including local government, uh, to t try and do our level best for people. Uh, as we move out of the emergency period. Um, we are looking to expand housing first, uh, and we have asked uh, local authorities um, to uh, look at their rapid rehousing transition plans. Uh, beyond that, uh, there continues to be positive support uh, from uh, the registered source and from the third sector. Uh, what would be extremely useful, presiding officer, because I think the most difficult thing for the government in all of this is dealing with those folks who have no recourse to public funds. And what we require is a change in UK government policy uh, to abolish uh, these daft uh, policies, uh, which cause great grief for many, many people. Uh, and I would be really grateful uh, if Ms. Wells and her colleagues uh, would join me, the government, and third sector in calling for a rethink to no recourse to public funds. We have been allowed to help and support these people during the emergency. Uh, what we do not want to do is to go back to the default position of not being able to help them. But beyond that, the UK government needs to provide resources uh, in terms of helping these folks. Thank you. Question five, Willie Rennie. The Scottish Government, what action it will take to secure the progress made on homelessness? During the COVID-19 outbreak, yes, sir. President officer, I won't go over the points that I've already made in my original answer to Annie Wells. But what I would say to Mr. Rennie is that we want to ensure that everyone has a, a warm, safe, affordable home that meets their needs. Um, our focus hasn't changed during the course uh, of the pandemic, but of course our ambition has increased, uh, and the government. Uh, the public and third sector partners have come together well to accommodate hundreds of people who were living in the streets or in night shelters and hostels. Uh, and the current emergency uh, accommodation arrangements are, however, a temporary uh, measure. Uh, the vital stage, next stage of this work, is to ensure everyone is supported out of these arrangements and into settled homes. Will you ready? It does show what can be done in an emergency, and I hope we don't lose the progress that we've made in the last few months by getting people with a secure home. Of course, it needs to be a suitable home for the long term. So the minister's talked about plans and discussions. What I really want to know is what extra capacity have in the last few months 
so that we don't go back to the way that we were, so that people have a home, so that so the amount of home is almost eradicated. Minister. Um, that's, uh, that's a very good question from Mr Rennie, and if I can maybe provide uh, Mr Rennie with two examples, concrete examples um, of uh, some of the things that are already in action. Um, the Wheatley Group um, uh, have already um, allocated a number of additional uh, for Housing First, another thousand homes. Uh, sorry, another. I, I'll repeat that. Another hundred homes. I beg your pardon. Um, in terms of uh, for Housing First, and that is extremely important. Uh, and we will be looking to uh, to other RSLs do likewise. Uh, we have also seen. Um, even at the very beginning of this pandemic period, uh, more folks moving into Housing First supported uh, 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 homes. And that is extremely important that we do that uh, for some of the most vulnerable folk, uh, because what we have seen is with the right levels of support, uh, we have seen a, a, a 92 per uh, cent tenancy retention uh, because of that programme. Uh, beyond that, um, we have provided money. Um, to third sector partners, including the Simon community, Cyrenians and Crisis, uh, to look at how we can better use the private rented sector um, in terms of providing more homes uh, for people. So, as well as all of the planning and discussions, of which there is a lot, there are already a number of practical examples of how we plan to move for forward, uh, getting folk out of emergency accommodation uh, and into permanent uh, suitable accommodation that meets their needs. Thank you very much. That's it. Number question seven. Question number seven from June McAlpine. Ask the Scottish Government how many organisations in South Scotland have received support from the Third Sector Resilience Fund. Cabinet Secretary Eileen Campbell. Thank you. The Third Sector Resilience Fund, part of the three hundred and fifty million of emergency coronavirus funding we have made available has been a success. This funding has helped protect uh, some 12,500 jobs and over 1,200 third sector organisations which had been made vulnerable as a result of the impact of COVID-19. As of the 29th of May, 30 organisations from the Scottish Borders and 35 organisations from Dumfries and Galloway received a total of 675,000. Further details of funding made available to organisations through the Third Sector Resilience Fund and other funds are available through our community funding map on the Scottish Government website. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer, and I'm very pleased to hear of the number of organisations that have benefited from the fund. However, as the Minister is aware, there are some charities which fall through the NED, and an athletic, a community owned football club in my area was refused both a business support grant because of a historical rates anomaly and the Third Sector Resilience Grant. They employ 40 part time staff who are now furloughed. But face being made redundant, and they have now had to run up debt, but they still don't know if they can keep afloat. Can you advise whether they can reapply for the third sector resilience fund, or is it too late? Cabinet Secretary. So yeah, I understand that the Annan Athletics application had been rejected, but they were, as the fund was set up to do, were offered support via Just Enterprise to a uh, who helped support Annan Athletic to more appropriate funding streams. Though it sounds uh, like things have moved on, if they're talking about redundancy, then again, I would be very happy to engage with Joan uh, McAlpine on that to see what further activity can be done to, to, to help. Um, I am also uh, very. I think they would be able to apply for, for third sector resilience funding again. Uh, again, though, what I'll do though, because of the pressing nature of uh, employment situation, I'll get my officials to engage with them directly so that they can understand what's going on, offer any help and support and advice, and see if there are other, other ways in which they can be directed to further streams of, of support. As a former sports minister and as a football fan, I know just how important our football clubs are in many of our communities and how much so many of them have stepped up to support uh, uh, communities and people who are facing various degrees of vulnerability. So uh, I would hope that we'll be able to to, to, to look and support uh, Annan Athletic, or at least direct them into some way, uh, shape, or form into something else that uh, uh, helps them out. I can't. Well, we can't promise everything, but I think with the commitments there to want to, to engage with her and the team. 
Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, ministers, and thank you all colleagues. That concludes portfolio questions on local government and communities. I'm going to suspend the meeting, and Parliament will be resumed in five minutes at three o'clock. Meeting is suspended. Thank you.